Wrigley Field, home of the Cubs. They've been playing here for over 100 years, and they're still looking for a World Series championship. Jack Brickhouse said any team can have a bad century. Mad Kim and the Padres are here. Kept with his home run yesterday and hopes to build off that long shot to left field. And Jorge Soler, the 23-year-old Cuban outfielder, he leads the Cubs with eight runs batted in here early in the season. As we welcome you to the north side of Chicago as Chevrolet brings you the Padres Cubs series. Chevrolet. And a happy Sunday to you all with Mark Grant and Dick Henberg. This is the rubber game of the three-game series. The weatherman has cooperated so far. Yeah, it's going to be nice today. It's uh, not as cold, not as windy as yesterday, and I don't think it should affect the hitters, although we saw a lot of offense yesterday from both sides, but it's going to be a grand day at the old ball yard up here in Chicago. But you promised there wouldn't be rain until There's later. There's no rain until later. We're going to get this one in, folks. Okay, let's go to Matt Kemp. Kemp uh, with that uh, first home run yeah. yesterday. It took him almost 50 at bats. Yeah, he loves to hit here at Wrigley Field, Dick. He's got a career 324 average here at Wrigley Field. And this is, quite frankly, a veteran hitter who's batting third, which I like to get him up in the first inning. But the last seven games, he uses the whole field. One thing about Matt Kemp, the, the time I've seen him in a power uniform, he fights off pitches with the best of them. When the pitch is inside, they try to get in his kitchen. He really does a good job of inside outing the ball, stay inside of it. So hence the 414 average the last seven games. The OPS is off the charts, and it's nice to see that home run come here the other day. They'll come in bunches. The one thing that Matt Kemp, he'll probably even say himself, try not to hit home runs. A good swing, square it up, and the ball will fly out. He'll hit his 30 home runs or more. more. Two things going for Kemp. He's a terrific April hitter, well over 300, and he really hits well here at Wrigley Field. Well, will Andrew Kastner hit the jackpot, get his first win today? Well, a lot going for Andrew Kastner. He is 0-2, but he has made progress of the first start and the second start. First start up in Los Angeles, he was really amped up. Five innings, five earned runs, and the 0-2 record in the 4.09 ERA. Now, that could get a little blown out of proportion because the last time out, six innings, no earned runs. The key for Andrew Kastner, it's his old club. He probably wants to try to amp it up a little bit, but he can stay within himself. I think that's one of the progressions Andrew Kasher has made as a big league pitcher to forget about what has happened in the past, keep his composure on the mound, and hopefully that bit bodes well today here at Wrigley Field against his former ball club. Well, a mild quad injury for Justin Upton has him out of the starting lineup. That's a shame against John Lester. Lifetime, he's five for seven with two home runs. So the Padres are going to have to make up the difference elsewhere, and they're facing the left-handed starter for the first time. You know what? Uh, the... the, the John Lester is just uh, an enigma right now. Uh, he's not his same, his same self. He's not as zippy on the fastball. His stuff has a tendency to be a little flat. And, you know, when you look at these numbers versus San Diego and Cincinnati, or St. Louis, I stand corrected, not good numbers. He's missing over the plate. His M.O. is try to get the fastball to cutter inside. When he does that, he's very effective. It's not happening. It's over the heart of the plate with the offense of the Padres, hoping they can really capitalize today against John Lester. He's really struggling right now, so hopefully it's their day today. And we'll see how the Padres do facing a left-handed pitcher. Well, we have a terrific starting rotation with the Padres, and in some ways the rotation is a rotary club. Quite a fraternity. And Chris Button has that story when we return to Chicago.
Welcome back to the Windy City. Andrew Kashner warming up for the start today. Not in the starting lineup is Justin Upton. He had a mild quad strain to his left quad yesterday. He did say it felt better after receiving some post-game treatment. Woke up today, said it also felt a little bit better. Talk with him about when exactly in yesterday's game he started to feel that injury. I went first to third on, on Will's double, and, and then, uh, you know, I, I went home on Jed's, on Jed's ground ball, and it was kind of, it was, it was bothering me after that. Okay. You're still hitting the 10th, though, right? Hmm? Yeah, still yeah. hitting the 10th. That's all buddy I wanted to hit, but, you know, it was an important run, so he, he, uh, he uh, pitched run for me. How's it feeling this morning? Feels much better. Um, you know, got a lot of treatment yesterday after the game, and got some treatment this morning, so feeling pretty good. Well, the good news is, is earlier, about 30 minutes ago, Justin Upton was taking batting practice, so it does not look like it's anything serious. He called it mild, still day-to-day, -day, just trying to rest it today. Well, let's talk pitching. Andrew Kashner on the mound getting the start today, and this starting rotation has built a very special bond. They work out together. They go get dinner together. They also make time to watch each other's bullpens. It's something that Josh Johnson started last year with the group, that he wanted them to rearrange their schedules and make time to watch each other's bullpens and talking with James Shields who's been around many successful starting rotations he says this group is something special definitely a special group I mean you know bottom line is is that we uh, you know we try to help each other out as much as we possibly can and uh, and we support each other and that's uh, that's what it's all about I mean you know you, you need all five guys um, you know in our case seven guys uh, to to be with each other and uh, you know play well we'll see some of that success from Andrew Kashner and they can give the bullpen a little bit of a break today. Well, coming up, Will Myers, some big success leading off. He's hit safely nine out of the last ten games. We'll talk about what's the secret to his success coming up.
we're set to go the third game of the series each team has won a one run decision the Padres taking the opener five four and extra innings yesterday the Cubs seven and six uh, 52 degrees here at game time a forecast of rain hopefully in the distance uh, will allow us to play the full nine innings today let's look at the Padres lineup it's brought to you by Toyota and it's uh, adjusted because of Justin Upton's uh, quad injury so this is how Buddy Black has it set for today Will Myers to lead it off and Jan Solarte will hit second play first base Kemp in right field usual spot third and Derek Norris drops into the cleanup spot then Will Middlebrooks Jed Jerko Will Venable will take over in left field that seventh for Upton Clint Barmas at shortstop and Andrew Kashner on the mound. A powering crew James Hoy behind the plate today John Hirschbeck is the crew chief Sam Holbrook at second and Bill Welke at third. Well, the one thing that sticks out for me, uh, Mr. Enberg, is that the way this team is going to respond today with Justin Upton out with the left quad strain, it seems to me that there have been players who have picked other players up, right? So my point is, Upton on the lineup, who's going to be the guy today? Is it going to be Will Myers? Is it going to be Will Middlebrooks? Is it going to be Will Venable to pick up this team? Because, you know, collectively, they've done pretty darn well early in the season. Oh, have they ever? Their offense are... 54 runs total in the first dozen games that comes out at 4.5 runs per game get this last year they averaged 2.75 yeah. runs a game so the other team scores three you're down absolutely we got a chance this year and we've shown some late life in that dugout with these guys Andrew Kashner hoping to get some support which uh, he probably will with the way they've swinged the bats Kashner who end of last year 18 consecutive starts at Petco he allowed two or fewer runs and yet only one six and lost six which is not a lot of support but see if he gets it today against uh, the former team that drafted him number one back in 2008 just a totally different vibe on that pottery bench you know, Andrew Cash is going to take the hill he's uh, yucking it up right there with James Shields and going through their uh, little routine down there even with the hitting coach Mark Kotze. now he's getting locked in the Padres yesterday they got two in the first inning on Kemp's home run and then were shut down until the ninth when they put together six hits under Alonzo started it with a single Kemp then with an infield hit and then Upton drove in a run make it six three still no one out and Middlebrooks almost homers off the base of the wall made it 6 4. Ground out by Jerko 6 5. Middlebrooks is still at second base. Two outs and Jan Salarte jumps off the bench. A pinch hit RBI single. And the Padres had rallied to tie it at six. So, yes, the hope uh, thrives on that Padre bench because they do have the ability to come back. John Lester, a three time All Star, pitched a couple of World Series champions. In Boston, what do we want to see about him today? Well, he wants to iron things out from his last time. Six innings, six earned runs. He didn't walk anybody, and I'll get into that. He's a strike thrower, and he'll throw any pitch at any time. And here's the deal. When I look at those numbers his last time out, wild in the strike zone. No walks. You get knocked around like that. Too many fat pitches. Let's see if the Padres can capitalize on that today. Cubs defense behind him brought to you by Renovation Realty. Much like the team that we've seen the first two games of the series with the exception of uh, David Ross behind the plate Coughlin Fowler Soleil in the outfield around the horn young Chris Bryant it'll be his third major league start Castro and Herrera the double play combination Rizzo at first base Ross the catcher for Lester Chris Bryant first major league hit and RBI came on a broken bat looping single to center field yesterday he also walked three times Will Myers walks to the plate, ready to go to work. I think even though the Padres lost yesterday 7-6 with the way they came back, we just documented, that carries over to the next day. And I think we see that in this ball club. Right? They're ready to go again. Yeah, they feel good about themselves. They didn't like the fact they lost it in the 11th inning. But that uh, base hit by Castro could have just as easily have gone to one of those three infielders on the left side and we'd yep. still be playing. Now here we go on this Sunday and Myers comes out swinging. He 
You hear in the background the public address uh, for the press box 53 degrees is the temperature game time. 31 year old John Lester delivers. The low one and one. He's from Tacoma Washington. Drafted in the second round by the Red Sox 13 years ago. He's won 116 big league games. Three time all star. Line to the glove of Castro. Now the Padres in the series have made a lot of outs where they just drilled the ball, and there's another taste of that. Nothing Will Myers can do on that one. Boy, that sweet spot sound. You can hear that one all the way down to Kank Key. So keep swinging it. That Got that a good pitch. Waukegan. Waukegan is north. Oh, oh. Kank Key is south. Great swing. Not the result, but Will Myers don't change a thing. He put a good swing on it. Jan Solarte with two outs in that ninth inning in the tying run at second came off the bench and with two strikes on him. Singled sharply through the hole on the right side to tie the game. Hitting right handed. He hasn't had many opportunities right handed. He's one for six from the right side and hitting 444 left handed. Lester, the third starting lefty to face the Padres. Kershaw and Bumgarner, the other. Kershaw, no decision, and the Padres beat Bumgarner. Matt Kemp next. Well, we just saw the change up from John Lester. It's one of his key pitches. Two and two. He'll throw the cut fastball, the fastball with the two seam action, the change up, the slow curveball. A lot of his pitches have been flat though lately. He's going to be living around 91, 92. He'll touch 94 at times, but everything away here, down and away to Solarte. Another chance for Castro, a convenient big hop, and there's two away. And a look at the keys to the game brought to you by your Honda dealers of San Diego County, Mark. Okay, Castro locates the fastball. If Andrew can do that and then throw his secondary pitches late in the count and get some strikeouts and some weak swings, he should be A OK. And Pester Lester, we know it's been out there. Get runners on first base. He does not like to throw over to first base. He's got quote the thing. There's the call thing in golf. What's it called? The yips. yips. The mm -hmm. thing. It's it's in basketball. It's in baseball. It's in sports. It's uh, he does not like to throw over to first base. So get runners on first base. The ball just won't leave your hand. It's right. true in basketball as well with some free throw shooters. Matt Kemp. Deep home run through the wind yesterday in the first inning. His first as a Padre. Took him uh, 46 at bats to get the big blow and. Maybe that'll set him off on a rash of home runs. Reaches out and fouls that out of play. Hitting 319 in April, Matt Kemp, and 324 lifetime here at Wrigley. Wrigley. That's in there. There's a little cut fastball at 89, catching the outside corner. Derek Norris hitting throughout the lineup. He told you in the interview he doesn't expect to hit third or fourth, but is today because of Justin Upton on the bench. I think Derek Norris, along with a lot of, you know, Matt Kemp knows he's going to hit third, right? But Derek Norris is a guy that can put up in the lineup, down the lineup. And he's going to, he's just going to take his at bats and do the best he can in whatever situation it is, do the best he can. If he has to move the runner, he'll do that. He gets it. Two and two now to Kemp. He's hit the ball hard in the series. Nothing to show for it. Then yesterday comes off the bench and doesn't hit it very hard and gets an infield hit on a swinging bunt past the mound. Three forty average for Kemp. First twelve games. Another foul. Padres after the game today fly to Colorado to Denver for a four game series. The Cubs go to Pittsburgh for four. Oh, David Ross wanted to just call that last sequence of pitches off. See everything's away. We're going to go breaking ball down and in towards the back foot. And it's in the dirt full count. 
Matt's done a nice job of laying off some pitches in the dirt this year. Base is empty. We're just underway. First inning, a couple of bounce, and a full count to Matt Kemp. And here comes the eighth pitch. Once again, another battle for Matt Kemp. Drag three call. Caught looking at a fastball. Padres go in order. Dexter Fowler will lead it off against Andrew Kastner in the Cubs first. years now the skipper here in Chicago and here's his lineup today brought to you by Hyundai Fowler and Jorge Soleil Anthony Rizzo at first Chris Bryant USD star and Starlin Castro had the game winner yesterday in the 11th inning Chris Conklin in left field David Ross gets the start behind the plate his first of the three game series John Lester hits eighth Madden likes to bat his pitchers eighth Jonathan Herrera ninth Oh, the big Texan right hander Andrew Castor pitching against his former team getting fired up. Look at the scouting report for Andrew Castor. Great movement on the two seam fastball. If he doesn't overthrow it, great movement, and he can locate with the best of them. Hey, don't underestimate the changeup. He throws a slider, but I feel his changeup when it's on, it's the second best pitch. Dexter Fowler with the Cubs, and he takes a fastball for a strike at 94. He does have easy gas, yes, as they say. Back with a breaking ball, one and one. Was that a changeup? At 87. Yep. He's breaking it out early. Then comes with a riding fastball. A lot of action on that. 96. It misses. Two and one. Fowler's had success against Kashner. He's four for nine with a home run. And three and one. You see that Derek Norris, when he put down that signal, he was the number one and he wiggled. That means the two seam fastball. So he falls behind Fowler, three balls and a strike. Fastball away. Oof. Fouled off the catcher, Norris. Well, he is 13 games into the season. He's had his share of knocks, hasn't he? Yes, he has. He's. So you want to be a catcher, eh? Well, you're going to get beat up. Ooh. Right off the grill. That'll the water your eyes, eh? Yeah. Full count. To 97 on that fastball from Castro. With that said, the outfield for the Padres playing him to go that way. Venable over towards left field line, and in center field, you know, Will Myers. You can see there's straight up the gut there where he's playing on that left side. Line drive foul. Look out, Willie Blair. Right down into the Padres bullpen here at Wrigley Field. 
They don't uh, have the protection of being out beyond the outfield fence there in the field of play you know, foul part of the field of play. Looks like nobody's got their gloves on either. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. And a looper to right that's going to fall in front. Of Matt Kemp he bobbles the ball so Fowler will take another base he might take another and he's seen that Kemp had then fumbled the ball a second time. So the Padres uh, penchant for committing errors unfortunately continues. They've been giving away runs so a single and an error. Couldn't find it with the glove and then he kicked it forward and then the grab with the handle can't find that handle and Fowler who's got good speed and the play being right in front of him as soon as he sees daylight right there he's going to take the extra base. Unfortunately he made a slide here otherwise had he seen the second bobble he could have gone on to third. So a blue pit and an error standing with no one out at second base is Fowler and here's Soler. Young Cuban outfielder has a couple of home runs and eight runs batted in to lead the team. Ground ball up the middle. Jerko can't get it. Fowler around third. He scores and the Cubs lead it one nothing. Good throw by Myers. It was fairly close. Now the Cubs waste no time in scoring a run. As Soler has his ninth RBI. Well, Soler going up the center of the diamond and just out of the reach of Jed Jerko. And you know what? Tells you a lot about Will Myers. That's a really good throw. Derek Norris has got to be out in front of home plate, creating that lane. Fowler slaps home plate for the first run of the afternoon. Will played that one nicely. He did all he could do. So Anthony Rizzo steps up, the man that was traded by the Padres to the Cubs to acquire Andrew Kashner. Fouls it away. The Cubs are a very patient lot as hitters. They take a lot of pitches. Rizzo, most of all, takes a pitch for a strike 0 and 2. They keep track of everything these days. And uh, the Cubs lead the National League almost four pitches per at bat. Rizzo seventh in the entire National League, 4.27 pitches. Only three on this occasion, and he pops that up. Clint Barmas playing over on the second base side of the bag comes in behind the mound to make the catch. As we uh, check out the Padres defense, brought to you by your San Diego County Four dealers. You hear the crowd in the background. Uh, Welcoming Chris Bryant to the plate. Venable in left, Myers in center, Camp in right field. Middlebrooks, Barmas, Jerko, Salarte around the infield. Young getting a start at first base. Derek Norris behind the plate. Got the big glove, Salarte. He's a handyman. Mm -hmm. He can play anywhere. And inside to Bryant. Well, he had a broken bat single and an RBI yesterday. Good to get that first major league hit regardless. And on the plate of the plate took second base. And then he had an infield hit later in the game. That's a little trouble getting the ball out of his glove as he charged a slow roller. And uh, Bryant runs pretty well for a big man. Beat it out. That's a strike. Two and one. Well, the Padre pitching staff has been pitching him well. Sure, he looked at a lot of pitches yesterday. Chris Bryant did with those three walks, but hard stuff in off the plate. They don't want to let him get extended. Here's the changeup again. Two that, and two. That's a big league changeup from Andrew Kastner. Called up for the opening game of this series. And his troubles trying to find James Shield stuff. Swing and a miss, and down he goes. Another changeup. First strike out for Kashner. They're even applauding him, and he strikes out. They're just in love with him. They know that his future is going to be extraordinarily bright. 
Andrew Kasher knows how to pitch. He's got some electric stuff. He's got that changeup working righty on righty and great location with that pitch. Tells you a lot about the right hander. Starlin Castro, three hits yesterday, including the single in the 11th inning that won it. He's uh, hit safely going back to last year in 33 of the last 37 games. It's just a good, solid baseball hitter. Mm -hmm. You can almost write in close to 200 hits for him every year. Ground ball to the shortstop. Barmas up with it. Quick flip across. Drop by Salarte. And while he goes for the ball, over to third, so there, the second error of the inning. Barmas wasting no time, just fielding through right away and is pulling Salarte off the bag and an unfamiliar position, Salarte unable to handle it. Yeah, the, the one thing that surprised me on this play is that as soon as you make the point, Dick, when he catches the ball, it's on the run and throws. And I think that Clint had had time to set himself and make a throw. Salarte, does he come off the bag? No, he, Doesn't he was matter. stretching, yeah. yeah. And he runs right into Castro. So first and third. Two errors and two singles here in the Cubs first inning. And Chris Coughlin, the batter. We're going to charge the error not to Barmas, but to Alonzo. I mean, Salarte used to saying Alonzo over there at first. I think that's a tough error on uh, Salarte. I think that should be an E6. Fastball. No, that's another change. One and one. So an error. The right fielder Kemp and an air Salarte here in the first inning. One run home. One and one to Coglin. Yeah, you know what? After the jury's back, you know, that, that ball's got to be caught, right? Salarte, E3. And it's a tricky business there at first base. When do you come off the bag? You want to stretch out and, and make contact, but yeah. you got to know when you can't stay there. You have to leave the bag, and another pitch. Low three and one now to Coglin. David Ross, the catcher on deck. And the pitch count with the errors here up to 24. Yeah, with the, and as a pitcher, you hate to see that sloppy play behind you. Ground ball into right field, and the air is costing the Padres. Soler, Soler jumps uh, off third into the plate, and on to third. Goes Castro. It's two nothing. They can uh, take a big bite out of you. Two seamer in. He wanted it away and on contact with it. Coglin gets the fastball right down the middle, out in front of a little bit, but he pulls it to where he finds the hole on that right side. And because of the error, errors, Andrew Cash has got to extend the inning and throw more pitches. Coglin was 0 for 7 in the series prior to that base hit. Struck out three times. So a, a rough opening frame for Andrew Kastner and the defense behind him. Loop single fouler. Error by right fielder Kemp. Fouler to second. So there, RBI single up the middle after Rizzo popped up and Brian struck out. Castro safe on Solarte's error. Inning extended. Coughlin takes advantage. Knocks in his third run of the season. David Ross. Just one for six. It's a rare start today. First and third, two out. Ball one. Now the workload continues to go up for Andrew Cashman. That was the 26th pitch of the inning. Two and oh. Full bloom until about a month from now. Two and one. The 
This is where you have to pull yourself together. You haven't been supported well early, but you got to get out of this inning. Keep them at two. Plenty of time. But he falls yeah. behind Ross three and one. And you know, I'll be quite frank with you. You know, a lot of people ticked off right now the way this one's starting. And, but you got to you got to maintain that poise out there. You can't let it eat away at you. Sure, you're upset about it, but you got to make a good pitch here. You got to you got to catch the ball. The buddy's upset. And Ross. A walk and the inning continues. The number eight batter in the lineup is the pitcher, John Lester. Lester, you should figure to get out of the inning here. Lester's lifetime is 0 for 39. There they are, Cubs at every base. Castro at third, Coglin at second, now Ross at first. Break one. I think the one thing that Andrew Kasher has learned over the years, and uh, he realized this, the things you can't control. He can't control. He can. C A N. Making a good quality pitch here and getting out of the inning. He can't control what happens behind him. Sometimes that's tough for pitchers at times. Looks like a pretty good pitch there. Got squeezed. That's a lot of tosses. 32 in the first inning. Maintain the same mechanics. Try not to do too much. You got to be true to yourself and know what you're capable of doing. If you try too hard, it's going to backfire on you. It's going to flatten out. Chop toward third. Middlebrook's able to field the ball at the bag for the final out. But two runs, three hits, two errors, three left. An ugly first inning for the Padres' Andrew Kastner. Nothing. And two days ago, Dexter Fowler hit that ball, got lost in the Ivy. Well, Davey Martinez, the bench coach for the Cubs, got to thinking, I wonder what else has been stuck out there. So he went digging around, and here's what he found. A ball rotted all the way to the strings, and it had vines growing around it. So you never know what kind of hidden gems you'll find back there in the Ivy. <laughs> Looks like it was going to grow its own uh, <laughs> Ivy, that ball, huh? Thank you, Chris. Here we go. Second inning. Derek Norris, Will Middlebrooks, and Jed Jerko for the Padres against Leicester. Both runs are unearned, scored by the Cubs in the bottom of the first. So the Padres have given up 10 unearned runs in 12 games plus this one. That's got to stop. I can't afford to keep giving away free tallies. Norris at 262 as he checks in. Lester ahead two strikes. Well, the last thing you want to have John Lester do is get into a groove. Out 
outside. Levels a count of two and two. I mentioned earlier about John Lester. A lot of his pitches recently have been flat. That means he's working around the baseball, not staying on top of it. And the cutter kind of just moving on the same plane, and hitters are attacking that. Line drive. Castro can't catch that one. He leaped up and uh, took care of business in the first inning on the line drive by Myers. And Derek Norris, a leadoff single here in the second. The, the best uh, medicine for the Padres would be come right back and get a run or two here in the second. Nice swing right there by Derek Norris in the hole. Had two strikes on him. Fought off a pitch once again up in the zone from John Lester. Will Middlebrooks. Home run in the first game of the series. A two run shot to right field, right center. Almost homered again yesterday, again to right center field. A double. Late call strike by James Hoy. Dexter Fowler plays a shallow center field, doesn't he? What just happened here? Well, Bud Black. Somebody just get tossed? Coming out of the dugout asking play dump or Hoy, what's that about? Know if somebody was chirping about that last pitch or what, but John Hirschbeck is the crew chief here now on the right, hearing the appeal from Bud Black. It appears Mr. Black is uh, is gone. Oh, that's the real heave hole from James Hoy. In case anyone missed it. The second ejection for Bud here in this uh, 2015 season. He doesn't usually get uh, the, the thumb very often. There's the pitch, and it was a, a strike to Middlebrooks. Well, here's the pitch in question. We just showed it to you on tracks, and uh, as it crosses, yeah, it catches the plate. Buddy was probably barking that it was low. According to the Fox tracks, it said that it hit the bottom line. That ball is hit deep to left field. That's got plenty of carry, and Middlebrooks will touch them all. That's the way to come back from that ugly first inning for the Cubs. Two big run score on Middlebrooks' third home run of the season. A 2 2 tie. Strong, isn't it? Yes, he is. To both fields. We saw it to right center field. Drop the head on the little cutter down and in. Up in the construction zone, halfway up in what will be <laughs> the bleacher is. someday. Yep. And one of the carpenters will have a souvenir when he comes to work after the game. They're working furiously to try to get everything in order by June 1st and certainly before the All-Star break to have everything, all the scoreboards, the Ivy will be back and uh, the bleachers will be set. Jerko hooks one into left center field and Fowler has to play it on a hop. It bounces away but within his range and Jerko who's hungry for some hits gets one there. But still no one out here in the Padre second. So the right handed bat of Justin Upton not in the lineup. He's on the shelf right now with that left quad. So Will Middlebrooks comes through with the one swing, two runs. Jed Jerko following right up after the home run. Another runner aboard. Will Venable, left handed hitter in against the left hander Lester because he's filling in for Upton. Padres have only four outfielders on the 25 man. He comes out swinging. Yeah, you know, going back to Bud Black being thrown out of the game. I don't think I'm just guessing now that he was arguing about that pitch. He was arguing for Andrew Castro. There Probably. were a lot of low pitches in that bottom of the first inning that weren't called strikes. And it may have been wait a minute that that's been called a ball. When the other side's out there. Why is that a strike now? Sure. And you know what I don't know what was said from Bud Black too. 
James Hoy, but I thought that was kind of a quick hook. I mean, if you're an umpire, the umpire's barking. Don't you kind of give him a warning? Hey, okay, you've said your piece. That's a warning enough already, right? That was a quick hook. So, with the absence of Bud Black, now Dave Roberts, the bench coach, takes over as acting manager. Two strikes on Venable. And it's one and two. So, a couple of unearned runs in the bottom of the first for the Cubs, but the Padres. Not the count at two on a single by Norris and Middlebrook's long home run to left field. Now here's the situation Lester with a man at first base and he's had the yips. Yep. Trouble throwing over to first. Let's see if uh, the Padres challenge him, although Jerko is not a fast runner. See Rizzo le leaves the bag as he holds. If you're going to go, go on the first move. Two and two. It's kind of ironic because a pitcher can do so many things. You know, I haven't seen John Lester throw or throw to first by stepping off, you know, stepping back of the rubber, then throw to first base. A quick snap throw, right? Remember Clayton Richard with the Padres yeah. had trouble on comebackers throwing to first base. You're right. Strike three called, and Venable knew it. Second strikeout for Lester, both looking. Let's go to our Ram trucks, tools of the trade. It is John Lester. One of the tools that is not in his toolbox is being able to throw over to first base. Watch this. The big lead, almost 20 feet right there. Zach Cozart. Lester commits over to first base. By the time he tries to go back, he's to almost 26 feet. He airmails it over, not even close. So now a pitcher can step off. Once you step off, you don't have to throw over. And quite frankly, you know, the Cubs have said they, they're not even going to address it anymore. Joe Manu is quoted as saying, you know what, John Lester's just going to concentrate on trying to make good quality pitches to get the hitters out. Veteran shortstop Clint Barmas. He is four for 14 as a Padre. Ground ball. Oh, oh nicely snared by Lester. Stuck in his glove. No way. And he throws the glove to first for the out. <laughs> oh, my. Now, that is fast fielding and fast thinking by John Lester. <laughs> Put that in the highlight reel. You know, the ball gets stuck in Lester's glove, and then Anthony Rizzo loses his glove in the process because he wanted to catch. Watch this. Ball stuck in the glove. Right? He taught Rizzo gets rid of his glove, so he has two bare hands to make the catch. And the ball stays in the glove. Now, the, if it flipped out of the right. glove on its airmail over the first base, then... The runner Barnes would have been safe. That's a heads up play by Anthony Rizzo because he wants two bare hands to make the clean catch. If he keeps his glove on, it might distract him. Catches it right in the gut. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, what are we going to see next? We were talking about that. Again, you come to the ball yard every day. And you know you're going to see yeah. something they could not expect. There, there it is today. Andrew Kastner, not a bad hitter, mind you. Has a chance to give himself a lead with a runner at second and two outs. Now Lester had a double play ball there that comebacker but he couldn't get the yeah. ball out of the glove. Oh that would have been something if he turned his glove to second. Base second. <laughs> Has trouble of throwing to first. Underhands the glove to first. That's a fair ball. And Ross throws the first for the out. But the Padres come back on the long distance drive from Will Middlebrooks. Third home run of the season. And after an inning and a half, it's tied at two.
tipped off. Let's go back to the Barmas play. Lester gloves the comebacker. Whoop, hit, whoop. How do I get it out of there? I can't. Rizzo throws away his glove. And that's a what one a, three Buddha. What a heads up play by Anthony Rizzo. Yeah. It was going to be tougher to catch the other glove with your glove. And in between innings, uh, Rizzo trying to explain uh, to his teammates uh, just how to make the play. Gotta have a heads up. Switch hitting Herrera, batting ninth. And the count two strikes on him. Then the top of the order, Fowler and Solaire. Bounces in. How do you like that, Dick? One swing, two runs, back to even. Sloppy playing the first, but you know what? With the potential of the power in the bats, you get a base runner or two. Well, that's the difference that can uh, put you ahead or tie. Totally different from the lineup of a year ago and the last few years. And again, I'll go back to that statistic the Padres this year. It's a short sample, averaging four and a half runs per game. Last year, they averaged 2.75 a game. So three runs against the Padres, and you were in trouble. And the rich get richer because Chris Budden has Will Middlebrooks today and picked the stick. Two hopper to Solarte, the 3 1 put out, and Herrera's gone. Top of the order, Fowler will step up. Fowler dropped a single in front of Matt Kemp. Kemp had trouble fielding. Fowler went to second. He scored on Solaire's single. Then another error by Solarte at first base on Castro's ball extended the inning. Coglin singled, and the Cubs got two unearned runs in the first inning. Andrew needs a quick inning right here. A lot of pitches in that first inning for him. Thirty three pitches to be exact in that first inning. Got a call there. One. It's interesting this early in the season the Cubs and the Padres are the only major league teams that have not faced a team with a losing record. High fly ball routine long run though Kemp has to charge in and make the catch. So two quick outs. And Jorge Soler steps up. 34 games for Soler. That includes the September call up last year. Seven home runs, 28 runs batted in in 34 games. Yeah, the strikeouts are going to be there. Anytime you got a kid who's got power to opposite field, pull power all over the field, you know, the, the K's are going to be there. That ball hit well to left field. How well over in the corner is Venable to make the catch. Didn't quite get it all. Well, there you have it. The quick inning for Kashner. One, two, three. Go the Cubs.
today about his time in Tampa with Will Myers, and his response was, who are you talking about, Ricky Bobby? It's his nickname for Will Myers. In fact, he said during that spring training game when he got to play with Will Ferrell, he called Myers and he said, did you tell him that I call you Ricky Bobby? And Myers goes, no, I froze. I was too scared. But Madden had a lot of great things to say about him, says he's a great kid, and says this is just the beginning for him. A lot of talent, and he'll go real far in this game. It's a nice commendation from Joe Madden, and Padres couldn't agree more. They like everything they are seeing about Will Myers. Hit the ball hard first time up, lined it right to the shortstop, Castro. And like Ricky Bobby said, if you ain't first, you're last. And Chris Budden, everybody else is in last place because you're in first and pick the stick. Rounded away. Myers has had success against Lester, two for three in a home run. And as a leadoff hitter. 333 is average, fourth best in the majors. Lots of doubles, five of them to lead the club. All field power. Yep. Down he goes. Third strikeout for Lester. On base percentage for Will Myers before this game, 314. You want to be, you know, 333 or above, but you know, Will Myers is not your prototypical leadoff hitter. He's got some pop, which is good to have once in a while. No doubt about that. Jan Salarte grounded to short his first at bat. We out in front. Strike one. Pinch hitter yesterday, Salarte with a score six five and two outs in the ninth, delivered this RBI single to bring Middlebrooks home. And a 6 6 tie that forced uh, extra innings. The Cubs win in the 11th, 7 6. Oh. Ball in two strikes. Uh, for instance, that last pitch from Lester had a little bit of depth to it, a little bit of tilt to it. When he gets in trouble, that flattens out. He located as well. Checking out uh, last night back in the hotel room, the NLD, they carried the Seattle Texas game. I don't know if you caught any of that last night. No. Well, they had some interesting promotions up there in the Great Northwest. Two and two now to Salarte. Misses. Well, King Felix pitched last night mm -hmm. and they had the bobblehead there. That's not unusual. And of course, he's such a great fan favorite. But the night before, just they had ball caps. And on the bill of the ball cap was a bottle opener. That's very innovative. Ground ball to third, two big hops to Bryant, and the young man fires a strike across for the out. Hey, Saturday, MLB returns starting with an AL Central battle. Indians are going to take on the Tigers in the game. Only see on Fox Sports 1. Then it's the return of the Subway Series as the Yankees battle the Mets. Coverage begins at 9.30 a.m. on America's Home for Baseball every Saturday. Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. How about those Mets? They've won seven in a row. Longest streak in five years. Matt Kemp with two outs, bases empty. But I was thinking about you getting you one of those for Christmas. Maybe, a, you know, that ball cap and then right over on the side of the bill, there's a, a like a beer or... They can just pop it yeah, open, you right? Just, you, know, you don't have to go run and get the opener for it. You I'll just get, sit there and I'll get my shade from the bill of the cap, and I'll enjoy a uh, there you go. an adult beverage. Well, now I or a sarsaparilla. Now I gave it away, but maybe by Christmas you'll forget. <laughs> Kemp struck out looking his first time. Some Friar faithful in attendance enjoying the game. We've seen a lot as we take a look at that NL East, Dick. Oh, the Mets. Jumping out with that seven straight wins. They had some good young pitchers, don't they? Mm -hmm. Jason DeGrom. Miami, yeah. a disappointing three and nine. Matt Harvey is back. Matt Latos was the loser to the Mets yesterday. He starts 0 and 3, the former Padre right hander. 3 and 0, green light. Nah. Oh, he did. In the hole and a base hit for Kemp got just under Bryant's glove and just under Castro's and the Padres have their fourth hit of the game. 
So Kemp aboard for Derek Norris. Catcher number three, Derek Norris. Oh, he just topped that one a little bit, but found the hole on the left side. I thought he'd be taken there, maybe work a three-one count and get a good pitch. Derek Norris singled last time up and get uh, possibly get Norris in the stretch or uh, Lester in the stretch for Norris. Can't go studio bag. Let's see how he operates here with I say send him Lester's reputation. Strike. Norris a sharp single to left field his first time and scored on Middlebrook's home run. Breaking ball hangs outside. Well, they got stats for everything, and they can find everything out. For Matt Kemp, just his ninth career hit on a 3-0 pitch. They figured that one out, yeah. too. Oh, they can figure out everything. Stats, Inc., you bet. Wave and a miss at the pitch away. That fooled Norris. One and two. How many times they have it figured out? How many times you say for the love of Pete? Do you have that? We can too? find that. Okay, we'll get that. We're on it. I don't know what it is about that Pete guy. Is he going? He is inside and low. And Kemp, did he come off the bag? No, he's safe. For a moment, it looked like he had slid off the bag. But Padres have a tie breaking run now in scoring position. I think Matt did a great job. Look at he avoids the tag. Oh! Gets his hand on and then get the foot and the hand are on at the same time. Joe Madden is at the top step of the dugout. This may be challenge worthy, but then he waves it off and he's back in the dugout. Nice job by Matt Kemp. Going matrix at second base. The fact that Herrera went back for the second tag yeah. kind of gave it away. Had he just uh, pulled away as if he had made the tag in the out. Like right there, it looks like he has him. But that's not the angle that. Oh, nice. He did avoid the tag. Yes. Kemba steal and see if Norris can pick him up. Hey, big uh, Ryan Sandberg fan, and he gave it to a kid. There you go. <laughs> her day, her weekend is complete. Second steal for Kemp. Again, the 2 2 pitch. Right side. Ranging is Herrera and throws out Norris. Nothing for the Padres in the third. Rizzo will lead off for the Cubs. your outdoor project at rcpblock.com by Petco what we feed them matters 
And our Padres at Cup Series sponsorship presented by Chevrolet. With Mark Grant, Chris Button, Dick Hendrick, welcome back to Ripley Field on the north side on a 50 degree day. Rain in the forecast so far so good as we go to the last of the third. Rizzo, Bryant, Castro scheduled for the Cubs. Swing and a miss. Change up. Rizzo popped up. Second base side it was caught by Varmus because uh, he's playing over on the right side of the infield. The shift on for Rizzo. The, the unusual play by by Lester throwing his glove for the out. And then yesterday we had another Rizzo. Remember, he's trying to get out of the way of an inside pitch and hold his oh, swing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. winds up rolling one on the <laughs> left side and gets a base hit yeah. out of it. One and two. Well, you said it before, Dick. It's one of the beauties of this great game of baseball. You're never going to never gonna know what you're going to get when you come to a ball game. You never know what you're going to see. You don't need one of those accounting firms because the script isn't written That's in the right. It's the best reality show on TV. Right? That good swing. But isn't it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And it gives you time to digest and assimilate it, too. You know, it doesn't go so quickly that you can't go back and re-examine, appreciate it, see it for the total picture of the game. It's a nice theater. Well, back. Andrew trying to bury that two-seamer like Tyson Ross does into the lefties. Started in off the plate just a little bit, then end up for a strike. He might drop the old combio on him right now. Oh, no, he's going inside again. And it's lined to Solarde. So the shift works there as they crowded the right side of the infield. Rizzo belts it hard for the end. That's a big league hang with him, Anthony Rizzo. He squared it up, and Solarte is over there diving to his right. Brings up the rookie, Chris Bryant. Fans eager to see him cash in on his home run power. Highly heralded. Well, I'll be fine with another offer today for Mr. Bryant, quite frankly. Everywhere he's gone, he's just been top of that home run list, including college at the University of San Diego, in the minor leagues last year, in the spring training this year. Nine home runs and 40 at bats in the Cactus League. And Andrew Castor quickly had 0 2, got him last time with a changeup. Well, the, the Padres pitchers have really done a fine job making some good pitches. Oh, and then he hits him. Lansing blow, but at 97, you feel it. it yeah, that's two strikes. Yeah, that's the last thing Andrew Castro wanted to do. He just tried to bury the fastball inside and it got away from him a little bit. You see Derek Norris, he's up out of the crouch. He doesn't want to hit Chris Bryant. He wants to just throw it up in the zone. Maybe he'll fish for it. But if he does it, it serves as a purpose. Then he, it opens up the strike zone so many different ways. You can go back inside, you can go down away with the slider. Here's Starlin Castro, safe on the air by Solarte, his first time. That throw. Ryan dives back. <laughs> Thinking back to working with the Angels many years ago with Don Drysdale. And as we go to our T-Mobile Game Changer featuring Starlin Castro. Well, it's a prime position up the middle there. You see all the hits that Starlin Castro has produced since being a Cub. As we've said throughout the series, he is a hit machine. Andrew got squeezed on that last one. Pitch number two right there, Honda, Fox Tracks. It's a pitcher's pitch, huh? Ground ball through the hole left side. The runner was going, so Bryant will keep right on galloping to third. And the Cubs have runners at the corners with one on. Another base hit for Castro. I think through the years that Starlin Castro is going to learn that he doesn't have to take big swings every time, especially a guy like Andrew Castro who's got good quality stuff, above average stuff. Looks like he fought off that pitch inside and found that hole on the left side. Check it out. Short quick to the baseball finding that hole. No 
double play for Venable except in the second base. So first and third with one out to Coglin who singled. Drove in a run his first time. Infield sets for two. So see if Joe Madden puts something on here. Maybe send the runner. Joe Madden's had his troops running in the series. Yep. They've stolen 12 bases in 12 games. In 10 games, pardon me, 12 stolen bases. So that's tied for the most uh, in the National League with Cincinnati. Well, Castro taking a very short lead over at first base. First base coach Brandon Hyde in his ear as they get signs from Gary Jones over at first, ever at third base. Middlebrooks at the edge of the grass at third. Up the middle, they're looking for a ground ball and a possible double play. Wave that and that would nick the catcher Norris. One and two. There must be a time for. For the second strikeout. Bryant at third, hit by a pitch, and Castro sent him there with a base hit. How about the veteran move, Will Middlebrooks, going over there talking to Andrew Castro? He just saw his catcher, Derek Norris, get tipped with a foul ball. He's been getting beat up back there today. One in the grill, one in the leg, one in the hand, it looks like. So just giving, uh, you know, a little breather for Derek Norris behind the plate. 97, the fastball too high. Tell you what, I'll take nine Derek Norris's. Right? Yeah, he's won uh, the favor of everyone that's met him as a pod, right? Just hustles. He's got a great spirit about him, much less the talent. Two seamer inside. Nice. Got him looking. That's a big strikeout for Kashner. Two away. Time now for the Cholula flamethrower. And we know that Andrew Kashner. Can throw some flame up there. What do we got, Andrew Castro? 97. What's that? That's us. And that'll warm things up on a cool day on the north side of Chicago. Two seam fastball in to Coglin. Straighten him up. Through the limbo rock. How low can you go? Well, I'll tell you how low you can go. Back into that dugout for the Cubs, yo. <laughs> David Ross walked his first time. First and third, two outs now. And outside ball one. Pitcher again hitting eight on deck. Well, the beard of uh, David Ross showing his 38 years. There's another good one right here, David Ross, former Padre. Once, Just, once again, having the great attitude being a backup catcher, right? Play a long time in the big leagues. You know, backup is uh, in the dictionary of good words. I mean, you go in there at the football dictionary, backup quarterback. Yeah, Ooh, that good oh, work. Huh? Yeah, it is. Backup catcher. I mean, you'll take your foul tips, but you yeah. might live a long time in the majors. David into his 13th year of major league service. Collegiate star at Auburn University. A war eagle. He'll uh, tag one now and then. He's 95 homers in his career. Two and one. First and third occupied by the Cubs. Cashner's trying to pitch out of this third inning. It's a 2 2 tie here at Wrigley Field. Aubrey's trying to make it uh, three series wins in a row. After. Taking three out of four from San Francisco and two out of three from Arizona on the last homestand. Walked his first time, just one for six on the season. Runner goes. It's in the dirt, and Castro can walk into second base with a stolen base. That's stolen off the pitcher. Dubs are running. And now the Padres can't go the short way in a ground ball up the middle. 
force is off. Now first base open. Do you pitch to Ross or not? You got the pitcher up next. I think he's going to throw an off-speed pitch here or a good fastball down the way. Ground ball pulled foul. I think Andrew's going to try to nitpick. If he misses, he misses. It's the first stolen base for Castro. Lifted foul for space side and out of play. Half full to David Ross. Two outs. This is the eighth pitch coming to David Ross. This at bat. Jammed him way out in front. Yeah. Kissed it off the screen in front of the Cubs dugout. Way out in front of a changeup. You know, back in the old days, they didn't have that fence, that protective fence in front of the dugouts. It was just open. You had some screamers going in those dugouts. People would fall down in there on foul balls. That was the fifth foul by Ross in this at bat. And another half dozen. And that's driving the pitch count. Next pitch will be number 70 for Andrew Cashman. He's not out of the third inning, so a bullpen already taxed by an extra inning game yesterday. You have to figure you're going to find somebody out there that's uh, going to give you extra innings. Fouled again. Goodness. What in the Luke Aplin's going on here? Old aches and pains. Yeah. Good call. Well, it's the right city for it, yeah. isn't it? Aplin. Serving the foul balls down at Comiskey in his day on the south side. Ten pitches this at bat, seven foul balls. And he finally walks him. But the base is loaded again for the Cubs. Second walk from Kasher and John Lester, the pitcher, steps up as he did with the bases loaded in the first inning and grounded the third. Okay, Derek Norris out to have a little chat as you see that the bases are full of Cubs. Just to give a little bit of a breather after that battle with David Ross. Threw him a slider, three and two. Forced at any base. Say that Lester is due, right? 0 for 40 in his major league career. Strike one. Eased up 96. Mm -hmm. Ooh, made good contact late on the swing, but lines it. Back with the Cubs dugout. Well, John Lester would be one heck of a cricket player. Not in this game, though, as you see the breakdown. 72 total. Quick second inning for Andrew. Only nine tosses. Struck him out. And the inning comes to an end, and the Cubs strand three. We go to the fourth. Padres two, the Cubs two.
shoot. The one one kick. A one hopper to Nettles. To Wiggins. And the Padres have the National League finish. Oh, Doctor! You can hang a star on that, baby! That's our great moment in Padres history brought to you by Geico. Jerry Coleman's call 1984 in October as the Padres rallied to beat the Cubs in the series and earn their position in the World Series that year. Good to hear the Colonel's voice yep. on that call. Never gets old. Top of the fourth, a 2 2 tie here at Wrigley. It'll be Middlebrooks, Jerko, and Venable for the Padres against. The veteran John Lester Middlebrooks crushed a home run to left field his first time up. Grounds this one to Castro routine. Hustling up the line yeah. made it close. Hey, MLB.tv premium the number one live streaming sports service is celebrating 13 years. Watch every out of market game live or on demand at true HD on over 400 mobile devices and connected devices. Real time highlights live look ins pitch tracking widget and more every night on every device blackout and other restrictions apply visit MLB.com for details. What do you do auditioning for those speed readers is that what you're doing now? Don't want to miss a pitch professor. Oh, good thinking. Jed Jerko single the first time. It's a great app. I've got one. Speed reading app? No, MLB.tv. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Just wanted to be sure. One and oh to Jed. It's on the outside corner. 91 on Lester's fastball. Straight away in the outfield against Jed Jerko. And when he is going well at the plate. You know, it's funny. I was talking to some scouts in the last week. As you take a look, right up the gut there, just a shade towards the opposite side. In the minor leagues, Jed Jerko wore it out in right center field. Wore it out. Three and one. He's worked the count in his favor. Well, he's hit a couple of balls to straightaway center field in the series, and just right to the 400 foot mark, and not enough. Both for outs. Lines that one off the glove of Bryant over to collect it as Coglin Jerko takes the turn. He's going to try to. Oh, it's a tough gamble. He's out. Not a chance. Goodness, the Padres have run into some easy outs in the series. Gambling on taking the extra base. That was ill advised. After going away, away, away. Lester goes inside now it's off the glove of Bryant right slows it down a little bit but look at how quickly Coglin bare hand didn't even give a tap on the glove and Jerko who does not have blazing speed tries to come up mm. well, ran out, ran into one out happened yesterday uh, Will Myers in the first inning tried to take the extra base on the play in left field and Coglin easily retired him. Will Venable the hitter. And it's 0 1 2. Venable struck out, took a third strike, his first at bat. Now the bad news, Jerko is out. The good news is maybe he's breaking out of his slump. He's two for two. Venable goes down swinging. Fourth strikeout for Lester, middle of the fourth in Chicago, tied at two.
All right, Mike and Mark. Last of the fourth, 2 2 tie. Jonathan Herrera, the number nine hitter in the lineup of Joe Madden. One ball and one strike. He tapped out the first base his first time. Out in front of that off speed slider. Looking at the American League Central, the Tigers off to a 9 2 start, about to make it 10 wins with Kansas City right there behind them. White Sox, Cleveland, and Minnesota trailing. Ground ball left side, Middlebrooks with a backhand, and boy, he's got a gun, doesn't he? One away. How about another quick inning right here for Andrew Cash? How about a fresco? Dexter Fowler, single to right. And scored in the first inning, one of the two unearned runs. And he flied out to right his second time. Let's see if he tries to lay one down here. First, Salarde able to glove it. The flip to Kastner in time for the second out. A reminder: our closed captioning is brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. They're testing Salarde over there. Yeah. Ball will find you, no question about it. Solaire singled in a run and scored in the first. He fly to left his last time. Solarte doing a lot of work with Glenn Hoffman over there at first base pregame. Glenn will have that fun go out there. He'll be hitting grounders all the time. Getting used to the short hops, the big hops. 95 on the fastball, dips low. There's Glenn flashing the signs in the third base coach's box and uh, rooting on his friars. Fungo master. Yeah. 2 0. Oh. See Kastner upset with himself missing he, on that pitch. Yeah, he yanked that last pitch down and away. Lights are on as this guy's become heavier. Watch the flags. As long as they're blowing from the north, things might be yep. okay. But if they turn, that means weather is imminent. You say the weather's coming from Kankakee? <laughs> No. Carbondale. Where, where oh, no, Carbondale's way south. That's well, but maybe that's where the rain yeah. is, and then we'll get the game in. Well, according to mine, it's going to start raining in 46 minutes. Could you be more exact? <laughs> Out of play, <laughs> so there. Well, it's not an official game, and it's tied to two. On getaway day for both teams. That's the bane of the baseball schedule, the getaway day to be delayed by rain. Let's hope it stays. Off to the south. Try three called. He got him with a breaking ball. And that's it for the Cubs in the fourth. They go in order. Fourth strikeout for Andrew Kashner on to the fifth.
guest, Elliot Haven. He is the head coach at North Carolina State and signed Justin Upton as an 18-year-old. Obviously, ended up going first in the draft. But what age did you notice something special about him? Uh, well, we followed, you know, Justin for a long time. His, his uh, brother, BJ, who's now Melvin, and uh, I'm a friend of the families with uh, Yvonne and uh, Manny. So we followed them. So we've known about Justin since, since he was probably a sophomore in high school. What did what did he show you back then? I mean, did you know back then that he would be the player that he is today? Was he that special early on? Oh, uh, yeah, he really was. Matter of fact, the question was who's better, him or BJ? But, you know, taller, you know, bigger body guy, could do all the things that BJ could do. He was a special guy. But the big thing about Justin is when he brought him on the visit, He's just, he's a class act. He is a class act, great smile. I saw him today before the game. He came and found me when I was talking to you. Gave me a big hug. He's just, he's a great guy. Well, I got to ask you, South Carolina guy, so you know Will Myers, too. What's it been like to see him have the success that he's had? Well, Will Myers played for a guy who played for me, Scott Davis, in high school. So I know Will. Will comes and works out with our club and comes over quite often. And uh, so I saw Will, too, so that was kind of fun. Very cool. The whole North Carolina State baseball team here catching the game. So I appreciate the time. Thanks so much, guys. So the Wolfpack is here at Wrigley. Thank you, Chris. The hitter is Clint Parmas leading off the fifth inning. And they are in nice. red. Yeah. Hey, one of the more famous uh, Wolfpack pitchers back in the day made it to the big leagues. The inside, three and two. Dan Plesak pitched for the Cubs. He went to NC State. So a full count. Farm is trying to get aboard here in the fifth inning with the weather coming. It might play into how these two teams perform here at the fifth. Although Barmas high fly ball routine to center to Fowler. Get a lead after five innings and they might have a shortened game and pick up a quick victory. Hey join the Padres at Petco Park on Friday April 24th. It's coming up next homestand for the season's first beer fest cocktails presented by Southwest Airlines first pour is at five o'clock. Come for live entertainment, craft beer from local and national breweries. Hey, stay for the rivalry game versus the Dodgers at 710. How do you get your tickets? Go to Padres.com. And go now because those tickets are going rapidly yeah. for that series starting next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The Dodgers in town. And then the Padres will continue on a long homestand with Houston coming in for three. Get to see El Tuve, a terrific infielder. And then uh, Colorado for three more. Kashner a couple hops to Castro running hard up the line and they just do get him very close play no two gone here in the fifth that'll bring up Will Myers hey, you mentioned a couple hops well on that beer fest there'll be plenty more hops than just oh, a couple oh that's a nice segue yeah but it's you can't yell cocktails at beer fest that sure can, you can. it confuse confuses people they came to have a some beer not a cocktail no cocktail is a hard alcohol drink Come on. <laughs> You're drinking too much of that sarsaparilla. <laughs> Here's Myers. Breaking ball. Slow 74 mile an hour curve for a strike. Myers is lined to short and struck out. Two runs, five hits for the Padres. Two runs, four hits for Chicago. You know, with this Padre team, as an opposing pitcher, you cannot relax with two outs. Will Myers has got that potential. Solarte to follow. Draw a walk. Infield single. Extra bases. Breaking ball trying to hit that outside corner. He did with his first pitch, but not the next two. So two and one now to Myers. 24 year old from North Carolina. High point is where he went to high school. The furniture building area of Carolina. Another slow spinner in there at 71, yeah. two and two. That's that slow curveball that'll toss up there. So a man knows how to handle wood coming from that part of That's the right. country, and he doesn't wear batting gloves. He likes the feel of the bat against the bare hands. Eightieth pitch coming up for John Lester. Two run home run by Middlebrooks in the second, accounting for the Padres' runs. Two unearned for the Cubs in the first inning. As uh, Castro and the Padres got off to a rough start, a couple of errors committed in that first. Out 
outside. Full count. You know, Will was dealing with some blisters on those hands. Remember, he had them all taped up, but not the case right now. Looks like he's healthy, ready to go. Got a good feel for that wood. All the way. His uh, hands are so calloused, he could do handstands on broken glass and yeah, it wouldn't even dent. Uh, you're absolutely right. He brings a nice youthful life to the club. Oh, he's great. Love this kid. Former rookie of the year. He's just 24. Eighth pitch right here, the at bat. And a good at bat. He earns a walk from Lester. Makes the first free ticket from the veteran. That's what I was just saying. Two quick outs. You get a walk. You get Slarty up there. You get Lester in the stretch. Let's see if there's some action on the base paths. Salarte has grounded out to the left side to short and to third in his two at bats. Again, it starts him with a slow curveball. Yep. Here in this inning, he's gone away from the fastball to start hitters using that. Tantalizing the slow curve. And Lester using the traditional leg kick. That was not a slide step. It was a high leg kick. Myers has two stolen bases. You got to figure he's going to try to go. I would think so. That one looped foul down the Padre bullpen. Kemp has stolen the base for the Padres. And Matt Kemp is on deck. Jose Valentin. Alerting his runner two away. Fastball away right here from David Ross. Runner goes. Ground ball to the right side. Didn't quite get it away from Rizzo. And he takes it back to the bag for the out. That's it. We're at the halfway mark in this one. Four and a half in the books. A 2 2 tie. Stenning Fowler started it off. The leadoff man dropped a single to right. Matt Kemp had trouble fielding. And the extra base for Fowler. So there punished the Padres with an RBI single. one nothing. Castro ground ball to short. Barmas drags a Salarte off the bag. Another error. And Coughlin takes advantage for the Cubs and drives in the second run. Both runs unearned. That's our Harris game summary. I didn't have time to show you Middlebrook's two-run home run that tied it. In the Padre second. Bottom of the fifth. Rizzo, Bryant, Castro, the scheduled hitters for the Cubs. Rizzo has popped up and lined to first. Shift is on. 
tapped out in front of the plate. Easy chance for Kashner. One away. Chris Bryant. Cubs Phenom comes up. A lot of publicity surrounding uh, Bryant being left in the AAA Iowa team for a couple of weeks so that the Cubs would have an added year of ownership with him. And he drives that one well to left center field. A long run for Myers, and he can't get it. Gets up quickly, and the throw won't be in time. Bryant in with a double. Sterling try by Myers trying to make that backhanded grab couldn't quite come up with it great effort by Will Myers this ball is hooking off the bat of Chris Bryant because he pulled it to the left center field gap had it in the heel almost overran it a little bit because that ball hits him in the heel of the glove and it was not in the webbing of the glove first extra base hit for Chris Bryant a gallant effort great effort by oh he's, he's ticked he, he thinks he should have had that ball. So a one out double for Bryant and here is Starlin Castro safe on the air by Solarte. I still think that error should have gone to Barmas the shortstop on the throw pulled Solarte off the bag. Nevertheless he singled the last time did Castro. Well, he came up as what 20 21 year old and collected a couple of hundred hits right off the bat. Field, Kemp is there for the second out. Dick, I want to go back to that play Will Myers almost made because before the pitch was thrown, Will Myers looked like he was playing on the there. See where he's playing? He's over the right center field side. He's got a long way to go, and this ball is hooking off the right handed bat of Bryant, and it hits him in the heel of the glove. And you know that could be a dangerous play. We landed on the baseball too. That's why he was holding his ribs. You yeah. just saw him kind of feeling that uh, left side of his rib cage. Hopefully nothing serious. Uh, there's two away to Chris Coglin, RBI single and a strikeout. That was a long way to run. Well, he can cover ground yes, with those can. long loping strides. Ball one. Side corner, 95 on the fastball. First activity of the afternoon. And Brian Schlitter. Yeah. He gave up that three-run home run when the Padres won five to four. Ground ball to first. Salarde there. And the fifth inning comes to an end. We're still tied at two at Wrigley Field, Chicago.
Two runs, five hits for San Diego. Two runs, five hits for the Cubs. Wow. Now this is this season. Opponent's batting average. The second time around, he's making some good pitches. First time and third time. Whack, 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 whack. And this is the third time with Matt Kemp, Derek Norris, and Will Middlebrooks, the heart of the order. Coming up for the Padres. Single and a strikeout for Matt Kemp. A great way to start this uh, inning off with a 2 2 tie. Matt Kemp, career hitting 324 here at Wrigley Field before this game. Lester's thrown 85 pitches through five innings. And Cashner, 93. Oh, another first pitch slow curveball. Back with a fastball. <laughs> David Ross, <laughs> never mind. That, was like, that foul ball off the screen went over my home plate. David Ross was like a foot away from it, and he didn't get the ball. He let the ball guy go out and get it. He could have very easily reached out and picked it up for the bag. He blew it off. But that's what the ball boys are there for. You don't <laughs> want to know, take away their moment. I know, but still, you want to hook a brother up, right? You want to help him out a little bit, pick it up, and toss it his way. Two and one to Kemp. Down low, three balls and a strike. Lester fell behind three and zero oh to Kemp the last time up, and Dave Roberts, the bench coach, the acting manager, with the Bud Black, Bud Black being ejected. Let him swing 3 0 and he singled the left field. Probably a cutter away right here. Oof. That was a great 3 1 pitch to hack at right down the middle. There's Dave Roberts. UCLA star. His fame engraved forever in Boston Red Sox World Series history for that stolen base. High and a leadoff walk that can often lead to other things as a third of the time on the average the leadoff walk comes around to score. Hey Tuesday on SD Live the crew covers one of the most talked about topics in San Diego. Where will the Chargers reside? Mark Fabiani stops by to discuss it all. That's Tuesday after Padres Live on Fox Sports San Diego. A little cooling of the air here at uh, Wrigley that started the game at 53 degrees. They say it's now 45 with a wind chill at 38. Yes. Yesterday the wind chill was down around 34. I'm not saying it was cold, but I was shaking until the 11 o'clock news. Swing and a miss. Oh, I felt it over here too. I thought there were tremors. <laughs> What floor were you I'm on the 27th floor? What floor were you? Well, that's the high rent district. Yeah. I'm only on the 18th. 18th. You could feel the tremors all the way yep. down here. Yep. Yeah, I was shivering. Middlebrooks with a home run to account for the, or rather, this is Norris. Middlebrooks on deck, and this one's up the middle and through to center field. That ball hit so hard that even though the second baseman Herrera was shaded over toward the bag, it fired through. Lester couldn't quite slow it down and. Norris has his second hit, and the Padres, with no outs, have two men aboard for Will Middlebrooks. And it's time now for our Bill Howe play of the game. And guess what? It's Will Middlebrooks. You see the empty construction of what will be the left field bleachers, and Middlebrooks plants one halfway up. His third homer of the year back in the second inning, and that tied the game at two. It's still there. That'll be a nice surprise for the <laughs> construction workers when they go back to work. Somebody will scramble and get that souvenir. Chris Basio, the pitching coach, out to talk with Lester, who has walked Kemp and gives up the single to Norris. And here's Middlebrooks. He may be going over. Wait a minute. Now, how do we want to pitch him yeah. this time? Well, I was just looking at the defense before Middlebrooks came out to the plate. He's gone to right field. He's gone to left field. So they're playing pretty much straight up in the outfield. Dexter Fowler right up the gut. With a little bit of shade to the first base side. But left center field wide open. So Norris with two hits. Middlebrooks. 
Let's see with if he a goes, home run. Let's see if he goes really soft this at bat with change ups and uh, off speed stuff. 93 pitches for Lester. One has to think that uh, he's coming near the end of his outing today as Brian Schlitter is warming up again. Big chance for the Padres here in the sixth. Kemp at second. Norris at first. Both good base runners. Norris has excellent speed for a catcher. Outside, ball one. He hasn't thrown many fastballs in the last couple of innings. He usually tries to cut it. That looked like a straight fastball right out of the chute for ball one. Eighty nine on that fastball. Outfield playing Middlebrooks almost straight away. They have uh, noted his power to right center. They have to respect that. Was home run was pulled to left field. Outside Every, two and one. Everything's away from Lester. This at bat from Middlebrooks. Rain in the forecast. The Padres would like to take a lead here in the sixth. High fly ball. He just missed that. Straight away center. Fowler eases in. No chance for the runners to advance. And that's the first out. Brings up Jed Jerko. A couple of singles in his two at bats. Second baseman. Jed Well, lefty Lester on righty Middlebrooks. He's going hard early. Fastball, fastball. That's the 1 1 count. Tries to make him fish for a little cutter. He ain't biting. He went really soft on the curveball, and momentum from Middlebrooks way out front. Worked underneath it, hence the fly ball to center field for the out. So Joe Madden's going to make the move here with one out, and the Padres with runners at first and second. Jed Jerko due to hit, and Schlitter called in from the Cubs bullpen. Presented by authority to say the Padres may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. And the pitching change is brought to you by El Cajon Ford as John Lester goes five and a third, not happy with uh, being taken out here in the sixth inning after giving up a walk and a single. There's runners at second and first for the Padres. Jerko up, Schlitter pitched on. Friday night and gave up the three run homer to Will Myers and the Padres won five to four. That was after a controversial call of no strike 
the pitch before and that got Joe Madden thrown out and then Will Myers hit it out. Jerko is two for two. Well, a lot of two seam fastballs from Schlitter. He'll occasionally throw a slider. Very, very rarely does he throw even a changeup. So he's pretty much a two pitch pitcher, but heavy on the two seamers. Two singles to left field off the bat of Jerko and his two at bats. Do the movement on that pitch. Two and one. And uh, part of that, that that home run is part of the reason why uh, the Cubs bullpen this series seven and two thirds innings pitch they've allowed five runs. Slitter coming home with the Cubs. He uh, went to high school at Park Ridge, Illinois. Drafted by the Phillies, traded to the Cubs by the Phils. Fly ball to right. Easing back as Solaire. Kemp tags and he'll go to third with two outs. The Padres at the corners and it'll be up to Will Venable. Venable struck out both times facing the left hander Lester. Now gets a shot at the right hander Schlitter. He was traded here from Philadelphia for Scott Iyer. 2008. So a chance for Will Venable to give the Padres the lead. Will two for 11 on the new season. One of those two a home run. And he lines that one but foul deep down the left field corner. Brandon Maurer right hander. Getting loose in the Padres pen. Two. 96 on the fastball. Oh, yeah, he's got good fuzz. A lot of movement, too, with that two seamer. Kemp at third. Norris at first. And another foul. That goes up on the left field roof. Good low ball hitter, Venable. Mm -hmm. Schlitter working him upstairs. Of course, first and third, and pitchers like when they're ahead on the count to bounce that slider or breaking ball, and that's can be dangerous. Kemp at third. Base hit the center field. Here comes Kemp. And the Padres lead three to two. Norris pumps his way over to third base, and Venable delivers an RBI single. Good at bat. Second RBI of the season for Will. Outstanding job by Will Venable fighting off the two seamer. You're going to get a majority of two seamers from Brian Schlitter. This one is up. It's down by the label, but elevated enough to where he can service it out in the center field. Front foot is down, hand is back, attack that baseball, and the Padres take the lead. Clint Barmas takes ball one. There's a Barmas who created that most unusual play back in the second inning when his comebacker was speared by Lester. Lester couldn't get the ball out of his glove, so threw the glove with the ball to Rizzo for the put up. Fly to center his last time. Lined into the crowd one and one. Well, the first pitch to this at bat to Clint Barmas from Schlitter was a slider. And you could tell that, that that pitch just rolled up there. You could tell that that's probably his third best pitch. Didn't have a lot of action to it. He relies heavily on the number two. Two seamer, that is. Runner goes, and it's fouled at the plate. Pitcher due next, and Corey Spangenberg, the left handed hitting infielder. Has a bat. So it appears uh, Lester out in five and a third. Now he's the pitcher of record. That run scored by Kemp belongs to his card. As does Norris over at third. Swing and a miss, strike three. But the Padres get a walk to lead off from Kemp. A couple of singles. The RBI base hit by. Will Venable and the Padres are in front three to two.
gentlemen. We go to the bottom of the six, and Cashner stays on the hill. 94 pitches in the game. Pinch hitter is Harris Mendy Alcantara. And he bunts foul. And we'll have another pinch hitter, Miguel Montera, on deck because the pitcher spot is due after Alcantara. Slow start for Alcantara. Two hits and 24 trips. Broken bat foul back toward us. Brandon Maurer with Willie Blair, the bullpen coach, going over the hitters that he might face. Kastner working with the lead 3 2 as he seeks his first win of this 2015 season. Would be sweeter if he could beat the Cubs, his former employers. Fouled. Andrew Kasher should be able to eat up Alcantara with that fastball of his. Kind of a slap hitter. Andrew Kasher with the power fastball. He puts it in the right spot. It should be no chance as Miguel Montero waits on deck. Jason Mott heating up in the Cubs bullpen, and as Dick mentioned, Maurer for the Friars. Swing and a miss strike three. And the changeup. It's El Cantro. That's the fifth strikeout for Kashner. The Padres pitching staff leads the National League in strikeouts. Today's game presented in HD by Sony 4K. And that's exactly where Kashner was 4K until that strikeout. Now with the five. Montero did the damage yesterday back to back home runs a solo and then a two run shot. He's been a nemesis for the Padres from his Arizona days and takes a fastball for a strike. One home run to left field. Off Tyson Ross and then yanked one to right a two run shot. Pulled over the bag right to Salarte. And Padres take care of Montero on this pinch hit appearance. Two away to Jonathan Herrera. 100 even for Kashner, but he's been able to stay in the game because a quick fifth inning and now only seven pitches for two outs here in the six. And Bud Black, the manager for the San Diego Padres, has been letting the starters go. You know, it seems like 100 is not the magic number, like 110, 115. Tyson Ross yesterday went 115. Check swing, pretty good pitch. I like that idea. Lengthen them out a little bit more, right? Have them get conditioned. To throw that many pitches. But Black is uh, hiding in the shadows of the tunnel at the moment. Line drive slicing the left foul into the bullpen or beyond. As Bud Black was tossed in the second inning today, arguing with plate umpire James Hoy and Dave Roberts, the bench coach, is the active manager. One and one. To Herrera, he's grounded to first and grounded to third. And a pitcher spot due up next half inning. 9 1 2 for San Diego in the seventh. So it'll be a pinch hitter and then Myers and Salarte. Very little breeze now. The flag's barely unfurling. Two and one. Popped up. Middlebrooks wants it in foul territory. A one, two, three inning. It's an official game with rain on the way. Padres lead three to two.
Dugout gave up a couple of unearned runs. Uh, Rocky's first inning and settles down, allows just the two unearned runs and five hits. Walked two, hit one, and struck out five. Well, a heavy workload in the uh, innings that he threw today. A lot of pitches up as much as 30 in one inning, but he really battled back. You can see the intensity from Andrew Kastner. He had the two-seamer working. He had the breaking ball working. Now he's uh, talking with his teammates, going over his outing and what the Padres have done for him, giving him the lead. Not a bad line. Six innings, no earned runs, a couple of walks, and five strikeouts for the right-handed Texan. Looking for his first win of the season. We go to the seventh inning, and Jason Mott is the new pitcher for the Cubs. Mott in, and Montero stays in the game behind the plate. Well, hard thrower Jason Mott from the right side in the mid-90s, a breaking ball. Time for the Padres to add on. In his five innings, giving up only two hits, striking out three, not a walk, so he's been stingy. Yonder Alonso, pinch hit for Kashner, takes ball one. Alcantara also stays in the game at second base. New battery of Mott and Montero. Two and zero oh to Yonder Alonso, who has walked more than any Padre. Good on base percentage for Yonder, 457 on the season. Batting average of 342. Toss in the eight walks. Rounds that one to the right side and through. Leadoff man on as Alonso finds the hole on the right side. Hey, tonight the NBA playoffs are on Fox Sports San Diego as Blake Griffin and the Clippers battle the Spurs in round one. Coverage begins at 7 on Fox Sports San Diego. Clippers basketball, the clip show, is presented by Jerome's Furniture. Pitch count for Kashner, by the way, Mark Grant, is 104 in six innings. And but for that first inning, a couple of yep. errors, a couple of singles, and a couple of unearned runs, pitched very well. Here's Will Myers. Takes a low strike, ball four, and a one count. Myers has walked, lined to short, struck out. It could have been much worse. You're right for Andrew Kashner, but he battled. Left Const the base is loaded twice. Yeah. Concentrate on making good pitches and, and got out of it. Fouled out of play. It's interesting that the pitcher Lester batting uh, batting eighth came up twice with the bases loaded yep. ended the inning so it backfired that uh, strategy on Joe Madden today. Two strikes to Myers. Hit deep down the right field side, hooking or slicing at the pole and just shy of the foul pole. That young man hustling there and got that baseball. <laughs> and that's a father and son moment. Oh, yeah. Good to see your father come by today. Yeah. You actually bought him a ticket. Hey, Good on you. Larry Grant is in the house. Yeah. 82 years young. It reminds me so much of my dad. Yeah. Hey, what a well, nice you were person. you were blessed to have a good father. You bet. You know what? He's been gone now 31 years, and I still am trying to please him. Really? Yeah. I, I just. You uh, made the club, so, Dick. No, no, you're right. doing great. No, no, I think it's it's just the relationship, your son and dad. You yeah. know you. As you grow up, you want to be like your yeah. dad. You want to make him pleased with your performance. Yeah. Well, we are both very blessed. I know I've got a great dad. Loves the game of baseball. Loves life. Thank you. I appreciate that. I heard him say hubba hubba when he came in. <laughs> Roll to third. Bryant will go to second. Does he pull him off the bag? No. Able to hold his ground as Alcantara. As Alonzo slides in and Myers with more speed takes Alonzo's place at first base on the fielder's choice. Hey, the Dodgers are coming to our house, folks. The Padres take on the LA Dodgers April 24th through the 26th. All fans get a free, that's right, I said free, 2015 pet calendar presented by Cox on Saturday. Get tickets at Padres.com. How much do the valuable pet calendars cost? Free. 
And, and the Dodgers three, too. Take three. Take three. That's the broadcaster's code. So it? Dodgers Petco Park free calendar. How you doing? Great way to start the homestand. Yeah. The Dodgers have won six in a row, and they're now up to eight and three on the season, and are the leaders in the West. Salarte turns it around, hits left-handed, batting right against Lester. He grounded out three times. From what we've seen of Salarte since he came over from the Yankees in the Chase Headley trade last summer, he's a much tougher out hitting left-handed. Good layoff right there. So inviting that high fastball from Mott. And Jan does a nice job of laying off. Myers with a couple of stolen bases at first. Padres lead 3 2, top of the seventh. There he goes. And fouled away. Run and hit or hit and run. Padres mm -hmm. trying to get that infield moving. And it's one and one to Salarte with Matt Kemp on deck. If you're just joining us, Justin Upton not in the starting lineup. He did take batting practice, but pulled a, a mild strain of quadriceps late in the game yesterday, and so not in the lineup. The Padres want to give him a full day's rest or more before we go on to Colorado. Tough to take him out of the lineup with Lester on the mound. He was yeah. five for seven with two home runs against Lester. So he didn't want to be out. Two and one. Salarte had the game tying pinch hit in the ninth inning yesterday. He's one for nine right handed, hitting 444 right or left handed, eight for 18. So this is his sign. Hole open with Rizzo holding on the runner. And he fouls that away. Well, he takes a half a cat hack from the left side, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. and he? Judging by that reaction, he wants that pitch back. Hitters count 2 1. Looked like a pretty straight fastball, middle, middle in. Career, actually a better average right handed. So who knew? And another foul. Playing first base today. Alonzo giving the start off, but comes through as a pinch hitter here in the seventh. Mott, the former Cardinal. Runner goes, and another foul. Jason's now 32 years of age. First uh, made his debut with the Cardinals back in 2008. Strikeout pitcher, 290 punch outs and 285 career innings. And another foul. Well, a lot of pitches up in the zone from Mott. It's just a matter of Solarte. Getting on top of one, hitting on the line somewhere. The outfield playing him to go the other way. A lot of foul balls off that way. So they are swung over towards left field line. Nice avenue between the center fielder Fowler over in left center and the right fielder Solaire, who's almost straight away. Big gap right center. There's that gap you're talking about right there, Greg. Hit one there, and you might be able to bring Myers all the way around. Five straight fouls from Salarte. There goes the runner again, and he drills this one high to right field. That that's fair. It could be trouble. Solaire into the corner and touch them all. Fair ball, and Salarte has hit his first home run of the year. And the Padres build their lead to five to two. Jan Salardi, yes, sir, he looks good from that left side. 
Once again, another great battle by a Padre hitter. Mott, a lot of pitches. I just mentioned it. A lot of pitches have been up in the zone. He's following them off, taking them, taking them, right? This one, he gets on top of it just enough. Cuidado! Piso Mahato! Going to right field with the two-run shot. Quadrangular. <laughs> that is a battle there, folks. Brings up Matt Kemp. Kemp is one for two with a walk. He scored a run. That was an eight-pitch at-bat. There were five foul balls to uh, Hervé Solarte. Big smiles in that first base dugout. Check swing roller. Kemp is really upset with himself. Flips the ball that away. Didn't get an honest swing. And there's two away. Well, uh, Alonzo Powell right there. Hit the oh, he just moved on. Oh, that's Will Myers. Uh, right here, Alonzo Powell. He went up to Solarte after that bat in the dugout and just said one word. Wow. And you know, that is a wow at that. He battled. Lorenzo, Lorenzo Powell and uh, Mark Katze share the hitting duties, hitting coaches. You know, Alonzo Powell, he spends a lot of time in the offseason in winter ball. Every winter, he goes down to South America to be hitting coach. So he can outblock. So he's, he's doing some outblock right there in the home run in any language. Against the scout, potential talent, too. Yeah. Oh, he's a good one. He's good. He and Mark Katze working together. You bet. Norris is two for three, a couple of singles. He scored a run. And the count of one, one on him. Ground ball sharply to the right side. El Cantra throws him out. But the damage is done by the Padres in the top of the seventh. A single Alonzo. And a two run shot down the right field corner of the bat of Young Salarte. It's 5 2 San Diego. That's right. If you watch that glove with the ball in it thrown by Lester over to Rizzo, that was an out. He couldn't uh, get the ball out of the glove, so he just flipped the glove over to the first baseman for a rare one three foot out. Padres coming from behind 2 0 using the home run ball. Middlebrook's a two run homer, Salarte a two run homer. And it's a 5 2 game as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, and Brandon Maurer relieves Andrew Kashner. Throwing right hander starts with a 94 mile an hour fastball. Top of the order for the Cubs, Fowler, Solaire, and Rizzo. Okay, now it's time for the bullpen for the Potters to get nasty and shut down those Cubs after that big swing from Solarte. Fifth home run by the Padres in the three game series. 
looped into foul territory. Middlebrooks might have a play. He does. One away. It's Fowler. Well, now one for four in the game. Brings up Solaire. Mauer acquired by the Padres from the Seattle Mariners for outfielder Seth Smith. They like his high velocity fastball. Waved at and missed. Good slider. So Lair knocked in a run with the first inning single, later scored himself the second of two unearned runs. The only runs allowed by Kastner. One and one. It's a bit confusing for the uh, Padres. They have a Brandon Morrow and a Brandon Maurer. Right field not hit that hard but charging and making the play is Matt Kemp. Good read as Kemp out of the blocks quickly enough to skid in and take a base hit away from Solaire. What a great play by oh he kind of got caught up a little bit. Looked like he was kind of pulling up a little bit but then again turning it back on. <laughs> and laying out to make the catch and eating a little grass right there to go along with it. I like it with nice. a mouth wide open yeah. as he went in. As if he's going to see a big porterhouse come out that way. <laughs> so two gone. And Anthony Rizzo the hitter. Padres have kept Rizzo on the infield. Popped up. Grounded out and lined the first. Ball one. Base is empty. Shift on. And 2-0. and oh. Armas over on the second base side. Jerko a couple of steps on the outfield grass. And Alonzo in the game deep at first. Fly ball to center. And Myers squeezes the out. That's a quick one, two, three for Brandon Maurer. We've completed seven at Wrigley. The Padres have the lead. Five to two. And bring us up to date on all the, all the good news around baseball. So stay tuned for the post game report here on Fox Sports San Diego. Veteran Edwin Jackson, he's been relegated to the bullpen. Uh, 
disappointing acquisition of the Cubs as a starter. Ground ball to the right side and Rizzo will make the three one put out on Will Middlebrooks. Well the ponchos are coming out the umbrellas are starting to break out the radar says it's raining here and you know what there's a little bit of a drizzle. That's not going to stop these fans though. Second baseman. Chachurko is two for three. A couple of singles. Hopefully uh, the rain that has been expected to hit this afternoon. They predicted uh, yesterday it'd be three to four o'clock and right on target yep. starting to rain here at about uh, three forty five. Hopefully a light rain and that this game can continue on and be in the books so that both teams can get on their charter flights and head uh, to their next assignment. Jerko takes the strike. It's 0 and 2. The radar indicates there is no doubt but what it's going to rain. Got that right? It's coming in from the south. Nothing but green from Chicago on down to eastern Illinois, and they came prepared. 29,113 here at Wrigley. On this Sunday finale of the three. That's game the old series. double header right there. Oh yeah. Hey, formerly the Cove at Petco Park is now the porch presented by Pacifico. It's located on the main concourse next to the uh, the Western Metal Supply Company building. It's a great spot. This private group party space is next to the iconic Mission Bell and. Overlooks third base reserved today by calling 619 795 5555. Jerko works the count to two and two. Once again, that's 619 795 5555. Get on it. Have some fun at Petco. And make your ticket plans, folks. Uh, Dodgers for three. Padres come home from Colorado after a four game series on Friday night. Reaches out and flicks the fly ball to right field. Has good carry on it, but Solaire there for the out. Two away. So looking ahead to the pitching matchups in uh, Colorado, it'll be O.D. Despagne tomorrow night against De La Rosa. Morrow looking for that first win. He's pitched terrifically. Two starts against Tyler Matzik. James Shields already 2-0. and Draws Kyle Kendrick. Tyson Ross and Jordan Lyles on the Thursday afternoon game. We hope you'll follow all the action here on Fox Sports San Diego. Will Venable, a key base hit that broke the 2 2 tie in the sixth inning. So, Mark Grant, five Padre home runs in the series, yep. and unlike the Padres of old get a solo now and then. Middlebrooks a two run shot on Friday. Myers a three run homer. Camp a two run blast yesterday. Today, Middlebrooks another homer with a man on. And Solarte a two run homer. I don't think the Padres had five home runs in the month of April last year. <laughs> you may be close to right. April has not been a kind month of recent years for the Padres. As, uh, Sean Kelly gets loose in the bullpen. Yeah, it's supposed to rain for the next three hours and it's come down harder. Fly ball to left field. Coglin there for the catch. A one, two, three inning for Jackson to the bottom of the eighth. Padres lead by three.
The Quan Casino, only 30 minutes from Petco Park. And by Mercury Insurance, you could get two free Padres tickets, fans. Learn more at mercuryinsurance.com. New pitcher for the Padres here in the last of the eighth inning, Sean Kelly. And first pitch swinging is Chris Bryant and the young third baseman very high in the air. That's bringing rain with it. And the catch made by Middlebrooks for the first down. Well, Sean Kelly following Maurer who had one scoreless inning. It was perfect. One, two, three. Sean pitched the scoreless eighth inning yesterday, striking out two cuts. And uh, this early on in the season, very misleading. But you know what? What's not misleading is trying to cut down on the walks. Cut down on the walks. See the splits there. Once again, as a reliever, you have one bad outing. And uh, the numbers get all out of whack. He's given up six runs and six hits in his four innings. Hits the outside corner with a fastball. Starlin Castro safe on the air, singled and stole a base and lined to right field. Chris Coglin on deck. Rain has started, and by all indications, it's going to rain the rest of the afternoon and early evening. And Padres and Cubs trying to get it in. The Padres with a 5 2 lead. Padres bullpen. Taxed in the 11 inning game yesterday is but Black used six pitchers. Used a four in the Friday game, Kimbrell in both games, so he is on the bench today. They'll not use Kimbrell. Popped up off first. Alonzo can't quite reach that far. Chris Rurick. Left hander gets ready. Dale Thayer along with Kimbrell being uh, relieved of any possible pitching today just trying to get those arms rested. So the others have to pick it up in the yep. bullpen. Hit well to right field but Kemp has plenty of room out there to collect the second out. Brings up Chris Coughlin. Hey, every Sunday that's every Sunday at Petco Park it's family day featuring Kids Fest. With autograph signings from current Padre players, bounce houses, face painters. I gotta go to that. Face painting? Yeah. How about bald it's, heads? It's they fun. paint that? It's fun. To, yeah, you paint a big like bowling ball or an eight ball. It's fun for the kids. <laughs> it's fun for all ages. Next Kids Fest is Sunday, April 26th. Coming up. Buy tickets at Padres.com. Kids do love that, don't they? Mm. April 26th, you said. Yep. That's the Dodgers, right? Eh? That's the uh, Sunday Military Day game with the Dodgers. Do a camouflage, you know, paint job cool. on Military Day. That's They'd like call, that. Yeah. You know, a lot of fans don't realize the continuing uh, program for the Padres, and I think just terrific concept is to provide all the little league teams with Padre uniforms. And there's what, like 20 mix and match, 20 different styles. But camouflage far and away is the most popular. Coglin takes a bouncer and it's one and two. RBI single in three trips for the left fielder. The home run ball is interesting, and again, it just can't. Predict what's going to happen in this game. The Padres came in here, and the Cubs, in their notes, it was in bold print. Cubs, best in the National League, have allowed only two home runs in the season. Padres come in here and hit five in a three-game series. Yeah. Who would have thought that a year ago? AJ Preller's acquisitions have produced swing and a miss, strike three. Kelly retires. The Cubs in order, and we go to the ninth with the Padres ahead five to two.
Baseball, brought to you by Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's Blaze and Chicken Sandwich. By Petco, what we feed them matters. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Light rain falling. Seagull says it's about our time to pick up the scraps. Padres hope to make quick order of this ninth inning. But first, their turn to hit. Clint Barmas. Yonder Alonso hitting in the ninth spot after he pinch hit and delivered a single. And Will Myers against veteran Edwin Jackson. Beautiful bunt charged by Bryant and no play. Wet ball, perfect strategy. Barmas lays down a beauty and he has his first hit today. Putting on a clinic. That is absolutely beautiful. Couldn't have placed it any better. Chris Bryant playing back and he does the, the right thing. Just holds on to it. Padres with their 11th hit of the game. Alonso off the bench to deliver a pinch single, and that led to the two runs scored in the seventh on the home run by Salardi. He drives that one, but right to the center fielder Fowler, who is shaded over into left center field. Well, let's go back to our keys to the game brought to you by your Honda dealers of San Diego County. Well, the first one was Castro locates the fastball. If he does that, he's going to be spot on. And, you know, he battled. Andrew really battled. It. Six innings, five hits, a couple of runs. No earned runs, mind you. It could have been much worse, but he made some good pitches at the right time. Two walks, five punches. And then Pester Lester. I, I would say that's a pestering, isn't it, Dick? Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Drove him out in the yeah. uh, sixth inning. He went five and a third. Gave up three runs. One of them a long ball. Myers takes ball one. He's lined to short, struck out, walked, safe on a fielder's choice. And scored on the home run by Salarte as Joaquin Benoit, he of a 3 0 record. It's ready to pitch the ninth inning. See, that's the beauty of the Padres' bullpen, right? If one pitcher is down, Kimbrell being the closer, well, Benoit, who's now rested, can close it out because he has had that experience before. Well, the Padre bullpen doing a great job. Along with Kastner's final innings, they've retired 11 in a row. Another line drive to center field, and Fowler moves over a few steps. He's playing the hitters just right. A couple of line shots off Edwin Jackson, but right to Fowler. Two away, and Solarte steps up. No, it's going to be Spangenberg. He's going Ladies to and gentlemen, continuing for the Padres. That in the number two spot. Corey Spangenberg. So switch and the pitcher. The schedule to hit here. So young Spangenberg gets a chance to swing the shillelagh. Big swing on the 95 mile an hour fastball. All things are good here on the north side. You know, it's <laughs> Cubs fans, you know, even the leanest of years, want to support this franchise. Full force. And I'm going to make this prediction right now. Okay. Right. Mark, mark and, it and down. I, and I haven't been right since, uh, well, I had Secretary of the Show <laughs> in the <laughs> Belmont. <Yeah. laughs> but they're going to be, maybe not this year, next year the Cubs are going to be in the playoffs of the next year. Against the Padres and the Padres are going to be. Well, there, yeah. If they meet, if they happen to meet. Okay. Some way, shape, or form, yeah. That'd be interesting. I'll take it? I'll take that. I'll take that scenario. Cubs against Padres in the playoffs, some way, shape, or form, and the, the Padres sweeping the Cubs. Joe Madden and uh, Bud Black, former colleagues, coaches under Mike Sosha with the Angels when they won the pennant and the World Series in 2002. Two and two to Spangenberg. In the bottom of the ninth, the Cubs have the lower third of the batting order scheduled. First base and back easily. Barmas. Yeah, 
Got to protect here. Shorten it up a little bit. Runner goes. Wow, watch out. Wicked liner off to the left. And the folks discouraged by the weather and the score they have vacated their seats and uh, many of them up under cover in the lower deck. Rizzo not holding on the runner. So Barmas takes off and it's a ground ball up the middle. Fielded by Alcantara and Spangenberg, who's got good wheels, almost legs it out. Padres gone in the ninth. They lead it five to two. And runs in the first inning, so Laird knocked in one. Uh, San Diego committing a couple of errors in that first inning, and Coglin the other. So two nothing Chicago after one. But in the second, Will Middlebrooks with a man on deposited that long drive into the working being done in the left field bleachers. Two two. Will Venable broke the two two tie with a RBI single. That in the sixth inning, and then Jan Salarte with a two run home run in the seventh. Some frosting. And the Padres now leading at five to two going to the bottom of the ninth and Joaquin Benoit trying to get the final three outs. Benoit the eighth inning specialist with uh, Craig Kimbrell the closer. Fouled by Alcantara. And uh, the Padres have had a habit of scoring in the eighth inning Benoit or the top of the ninth and Benoit then is. Credited with three victories. The Phil Regan of the 2015 <laughs> Padres. They haven't called him the vulture yet. Right. One strike to Alcantara entered the game as a pinch hitter struck out. Waved nice. that and missed. Change up. There's the change up we know and love from Joaquin Benoit. This would be Benoit's first save of the season. He had a handful last year. Houston Street going to the Angels, then Benoit took over the closer role. Outside one and two. Finished with 11 saves. Had 24 the year before as the Tigers closer. Swing and a miss. Strike three. The changeup. Well, we have our fun with the pick the stick. We try to pick the player and get some points. And uh, Chris Button, if she's scoring big again with seven points. and. Boosts her lead 
to 39 points ahead of the professor. Dick, what's with the what's with the three? Well, I got three points today, and I, I hey, I came in with five. Oh, I'm, that's right. You got eight now. My bad. Come on, give me give, give me what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, things are lean enough. I'm picking. Everyone's eating the fillet, and I'm I'm trying to lick the bones here. Well, you know what? Stay tuned for Padres post game. Padres live the post game show coming up. We're gonna have uh, coverage of this game. We're gonna have uh, interviews with Will Middlebrooks and Will Venable, both Wills. Yeah, got a lot of Wills. You could go for Will Middlebrooks, Will Myers, Will Venable, Will Nieves. Hopefully they give the opposition the wills. Ah, uh, you get that? I get it. That's nice. <laughs> it's late. I'm gonna, late. I'm gonna steal that one uh, from you. I'm gonna mark it down. <laughs> Running out of material. <laughs> Montero entered the game as a pinch hitter, grounded out. A couple of home runs yesterday. And in the last 19 games against the Padres, going back, of course, to his Arizona work, he's hit 323 with five home runs against Padre pitching. Student body right, right there. Chris Norfia, the ex Padres on deck. Mark Grant. Yes. Good to see him. Seems strange in that Cubs uniform. Oh, and two. Yeah, the Cubs early on had two golden opportunities to build a big lead left the bases loaded in the first and third innings but it, uh, the strategy of hitting the pitcher eighth backfired on Joe Madden and the Cubs because the pitcher came up with two outs and the bases loaded and Kashner pitching out of the trouble getting Lester to bounce out and strike out ground ball swept to the right side right to Jerko in the hole and there's two away. And here's Denorfia, popular member of the Padres for several years, and off to Seattle, and then acquired by the Cubs this season. He's testimony to an athlete who isn't the fastest, isn't the strongest, doesn't have the five tools, except that you don't uh, include your heart and soul. Uh, Courage into that formula, and Denorfia is what every every fan loves. A guy that gets all he can, hustles on every play. No question about it. Takes a strike. And, and you know, Chris, he's going to be he's going to be 35 in July. He's put together a nice little career, right? Right. When the Padres, when he signed with the Padres, he was already over 30 years of age. Yep. He was just fighting to get a job somewhere. Did so well that he, yeah, he's had a nice major league career. Wheaton College in the East. There's one here in Illinois as well. And he's in that Hall of Fame of yeah. this college. He spent six years in the minor leagues before he made his first cup of coffee in the big leagues and back and forth and uh, put together a nice little string for Chris at the big league level. So a ball and a strike. Cubs down to their final out. Yes, he did. And one and two the count. Did he go? Oh, if he hits it, it's a double. Benoit trying to close the deal. Pick up his first save. Inside. Lock in another series win, and that's the preaching of the manager, Bud Black. Don't think too far ahead. Win a series, then try to win the next. This would be three in a row. Chop to the mound. That's a tough play. Benoit throw to first, throws it away. The Norfia is safe. That'll be a base hit. That was a very tough chance. Benoit had to go down the back slope of the mound and try to backhand it and off balance throw. And it's still alive for the Cubs here in the ninth. Yeah, right off of home plate, I think. Chopper. And, you know, he's got to go uphill and then downhill and then 
throws across his body there. Yonder Alonso tries to pick it, even if he picks that cleanly. Denorfio is getting down the line pretty well. Well, the tying run for the Cubs now in the hole as uh, Dexter Fowler comes up. And the man in the hole is Jorge Soler, their powerful hitting outfielder. So now it gets serious again. Owen holding on the runner so Denarfi can take off with the pitch. He doesn't. Fouled off the mask of Norris. He gets another one in the grill. Gosh, he's getting beat up. Fowler and home plate umpire James Hoy kind of giving Derek some time before he says, okay, come on, let's go. Let's strap it on. Let's, let's get back to work. Fowler one for four singled his first time up. Scored one of those unearned runs in the first off Kashner. Once it, that's a beauty. Base hit for Fowler. A couple of infield hits and the Cubs fans find hope here in the ninth inning. Scratch single to Norfia, a perfect bunt base hit for Fowler. Couldn't have placed it any better. Great back control. And that's the only move Derek Norris could do right there. It's kind of slick out there. You can see the mud building up on their spikes with the rain. Boy, he slides a good five feet right there. No way they're going to get fouled. So that gives the Cubs an opportunity. It brings Solaire, the muscular young Cuban outfielder. He has an RBI single. Flight out, struck out. And last time up, it was uh, Matt Kemp in right field coming in to make a diving catch. And after him, Rizzo. So Benoit dealing with the Cubs' power bats here with two outs, two on, bottom of the ninth. Venable deep in left field in respect to Solar's pull power. Fans unhappy that uh, Benoit taking time to scrape some of the clay out of his bikes. Solar leads the Cubs with nine RBIs. He's hit two home runs. Figure in that batter's box. First pitch breaky ball away, seeing if that Solaire will fish for that one. Not the case. I think that slider from Benoit is pretty much like a just kind of a, like a tease pitch because his secondary pitch, best pitch, is his changeup. Two base hits that would total less than 90 feet. Uh, set the table for Solaire. And the hopefuls here at Wrigley at 29,113 left. Looking for lightning to strike in this light rain. Tossed in the second inning. Aaron Balthy there with him. Well, Soler, a fastball hitter, has to figure he's going to get one here. 2 0. Oh. Padres leading 5 2, but that's a time run at the plate in Soler. Challenged him. Big swing and a miss. That looked like a slider out of the hand of Joaquin Benoit on that one. Had some late movement, straight down, some dip to it. 85. Yep, there you see the rotation. Just over the top of it and out in front of it.
He likes the fastball Solaire, so Benoit countering with the off-speed stuff. And the chant, let's go Cubbies. Two and one the count. Beautiful pitch right at the knees. Gonzalez Herman is warming up in the Cubs pen just in case something happens. But that was a wonderful pitch right there by Benoit. Knee high. And the count two and two with two on, two out in the home half of the ninth inning, and the Padres ahead by three. And the ball game comes to an end on the strikeout of Soler and the Padres after giving up two unearned in the first come back use the home run ball.